What does Paul mean by submission? That's what we're going to find out today in Romans 13. Well, we are getting into meaty topics for sure. And Paul starts out by saying that we should be subject to governing authorities. And I think we don't like that idea because we think we have the message of God in us. What are these governments? Primarily not Christian governments, not often goodly governments, not often governments who are seeking out the best for the people. Well, think of the Romans. I mean, right at this point, Romans are occupying Israel. And I think about five years after the death of Paul, Jerusalem will be sacked, burned to the ground, people enslaved, people running for the hills. This was not a government that was looking out for people. But God, it says, has put these authority structures over top of us and that we have to be subject to them. And you notice that Jesus followed that. He didn't try to overthrow the Romans. There were a lot of people who wanted to kill Jesus because he would not overthrow the Romans. That's what they were hoping he wanted to do. And it says that they exist and instituted by God. Whatever government you have at that time is instituted by God. And therefore, whoever resists the authority resists what God has appointed and will incur judgment. People noodle over this one a lot and think about what exactly does that mean? Because we are supposed to stand against evil. But then he also says we're supposed to live at peace with everyone if possible. So I think when you take this not so much as chapters of a book, but as an entire letter, you can see it pieced together. When it is possible, live at peace. We are also not supposed to conform to the world. We're not supposed to conform to sin. We are not supposed to harm other people. We are not supposed to repay evil for evil. And now we're supposed to submit to our authorities. These are all thoughts in the same sentence. You know, not the same sentence, but in the same group of it. So I know where my church has stood with it is that we will pray for the government, regardless of who's in the government. And the election is coming up, and I'm going to be at a speaking engagement at a Christian college at the time of the election. And I know that the next morning when we go to church on Wednesday, we will say the same prayer for whoever is going to be the leader, regardless of who wins. If you just take this out and just say, well, I have to submit to whatever authority's there. What if this authority says that I must kill my brother? What if this authority says that I must put my own child to death? What if this authority says, like in the case of Daniel, you must bow down to the Babylonian gods? Daniel's a perfect, I don't know, example of all of this. Is he worked within the system, become a trusted member of the Babylonian government, but at the same time, never gave up and bowed down to to the Babylonian gods, never ate the meat that he wasn't supposed to eat. He stayed faithful to God regardless, even though he did not cause a rebellion, didn't cause a battle or a war or overthrow the authority. Again, this gets very complicated, but I think it's a good point of how far do we go? I am not going to sin because the government forces me to sin. And I would allow myself to be put to death to not commit sins against God by the government. But that also means about overthrowing the government. So we're not going to get into, well, what does that mean for the Revolutionary War? You know, what happens when we have nations taking nations in captivity? But anyway, you can kind of see. So he says that every government has been put in place by God as authority. and they have the authority that was given to them by God. And he says, for rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Meaning if you're doing good actions, you shouldn't feel terrorized, I guess. But that's not always true. We have seen many governments in this situation. And so we shouldn't have fear of authority, but do what is good, receive approval. He is God's servant for your good. Now that's not always the case that he is seeking our good, but saying that he was put in place to be that person. So if we do wrong, we will be afraid and that the leader won't bear a sword in vain, meaning for no good reason. If if the servant of God is an avenger, carries out God's wrath to wrongdoing, therefore to be in subjection, 
avoids God's wrath and puts us in a place where we should be. Like I said, it's interesting to me that he is saying this in the midst of Roman occupation, but that we should pay all that is owed, taxes that are owed, revenue to wherever revenue is owed, respect and honor. This gets very complicated, and I said it makes it even weirder to us that he is writing this when Rome is in charge of everybody, subjugating everybody. Now, he was a citizen, and many people were not citizens. But the fact in general is that governments and civil authorities are put in place by God to give a level of structure, organization. In the United States, we have state, local, national leaders, and they're supposed to be a blessing to us to keep the rule of law, to keep government going. And that the government has been put in place to be the owner of punishment for lawbreaking, that we should always do what is good, that we should always do what is right, that we should follow our faith in God and maintain, I guess, our connection to doing what is right in front in front of God. And again, paying taxes, paying whatever is owed, you know, fulfilling contracts and everything like that. And that in general, it even continues on to more to say that we should have nothing but love for each other, that we shouldn't owe anybody anything except for love of one another, that we shouldn't commit adultery, murder, steal, covet, that you shall love your neighbor as yourself, and that love does no wrong to a neighbor, and therefore love is fulfilling the law. So I think regardless of what the government is doing, that if we love each other, if we have mercy, if we pay our debts, if we follow the laws, as long as they don't go directly against what God says, including things like taxes, which does not go against God's law. God's law does not speak to that. That's how we fulfill respect for the government officials that were put over us. And like I said, my church is very big into this. We will disobey if it causes us to do something against God's law, that God, they try to force us into doing something God tells us not to do. But unless it crosses that line, we are supposed to follow our civic leaders and do what is right. And he says that, that a time is going to come, that our salvation is near and is nearer now than it was before when we first started believing. So every day we're getting closer and closer to the salvation of the Lord. And the day is coming. The time of darkness is going to be over and the armor of light is coming. So he says, quote, let us walk properly in the daytime, not in orgies, drunkenness, sexual morality, sensuality, quarreling, jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desire. So we're going to just wear Jesus, you know, and get rid of anything that is part of our sinful flesh. And it's hard because we disagree with the government. We think that at times the government is very clearly going against the word of God. And not just you know, in the United States, but other places in the world. We see clear places where it's very against what we believe the Bible speaks towards. This is the whole package of it. About living in peace with everyone. Overcoming evil with good. Living in mercy and faith. And again, with the government, whether it's a good government or a bad government, as long as the government is not having us doing something that we should not do, then we should try to fulfill the civic duties of the government. It's a hard lesson. I don't think that we feel comfortable with this at all times. But like I said, I think I take the lesson from my own church, who on Wednesday after our election is going to say the same prayer we would say regardless of who gets elected, and that we pray our leaders will uphold faith, will uphold the message of God, and that as long as we can do so, we should. But again, there are times where we're going to come up against the Hitlers of the world, and then we must not fall. We must not sin in accordance with our civic leaders, because clearly that has gone out of the step of where we should go. So like I said, it's not a blank check to our governments that can order us to do everything, but instead we should clothe ourselves in Jesus Christ and not try to gratify our own desires. Ooh, tough. 
So what I'm going to meditate on is the passage talking about, I guess, being subject to the governing authorities and what that really means. And the extent that not just me, but other people, we complain about the government. And we have to realize that authority structure is in place and that we will do what is right inside that authority structure. We're not going to submit to the authority structure when it causes us to sin or orders us to sin, but instead we're going to stand up. But in all the places where it's not doing that, we're going to do our civic duty. What I'm going to pray about is that I, again, in those chapters we just got done with, talk about haughtiness, pridefulness, thinking about more than we should think about ourselves. And in that case, it also should be including the government. It is easy for us to get haughty and get prideful over our our thoughts on the government. And I'm going to ask for an extra dose of humility when it comes to thinking about our governments. And what I'm going to tell others is the fact that we should always, regardless of what situation we're in, put on Jesus Christ and leave no provision for the flesh. Leave no room for our, our internal desires, but instead always be walking in good. All right, well, this is a hard passage, I think, for many of us. And we're in the midst of election season right now. And so we're all very heated up. And so I think it's a good message to have. And like I said, I do admire my church very much in the fact that I know on Wednesday, When I go to church in the morning before my speech, that we're going to pray for whoever becomes our leader, that they can do the right thing with the authority that they've been given under God. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate listening to the podcast. Please feel free to email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com and remember to subscribe. Thanks so much for listening. 